Uh, uh, that was a great presentation. I want to introduce Professor Graham uh, McGregor now, who, again, who, who is uh, very much an architect of reformulation in respect of SALT has been pressing the case for reformulation. I support reformulation, but as I said as well, this is part of uh, in a wider package, including consumer empowerment in terms of spoonfuls and uh, possible sugar tanks as well. But without further ado, Professor Graham McGregor. Well, thanks very much, Jane. Great pleasure, and thank you very much for mm -hmm. sponsoring this and uh, being such a force in Parliament and trying to get more attention to obesity and dental caries and so on. A really great pleasure for, for, for us that you managed to do this. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we set up our Action on Sugar group less than two years ago, and, and I, I don't think, looking back on it, we haven't done too badly. I know there have been a lot of support from <coughs> Public Health England, from other... NGOs and now Sarah Wollaston and others. Uh, we did present an obesity plan to Jeremy Hunt over a year and a half ago, which he specifically asked for, on which it's more or less the same as our plan now, but we've refined it with further evidence and data because we are a scientifically based group, and uh, he did nothing. Now, I have no comment as a doctor, a clinical doctor, I have no comment on Jeremy Hunt and what I think of him, but I'd say that's rather typical. But anyway. The, the situation we're faced now is that Cameron has got to come out in January or February with a strong plan to prevent obesity in children and type 2 diabetes and to prevent dental caries. Now the question is, what does he need to do? And in your pack you'll see a six point essential actions he has to take which specifies very clearly exactly what he's got to do. The first thing you've heard already is reformulation. We reckon we can get, as Public Health England do, a 50% reduction in the sugar content of all sugar sweetened drinks and all soft drinks, and a reduction in sweetness in those artificially sweetened products. So people's sugar taste awareness comes down as it has for salt. You may be aware we're all eating much less salt. Now when you go abroad, the food tastes so salty, and you don't even realize it's happened. That's what we want to see for sugar. Now, fat is also important because it has two and a half times the calories of sugar and tends to be forgotten in all the publicity about sugar. And we want a 15% reduction in fat, that's the reformulation, which will cause the same calorie reduction as a sugar. It's 100 kilocalories per person per day for sugar, 100 kilocalories per person for fat. And that has the advantage also that saturated fat puts up our cholesterol, which is another major cause of death in the UK. So predominantly focusing on palm oil would be the best way of doing that. And then, of course, the other actions are very similar. Stop promotion of all unhealthy food and drink, as you heard from Alison. Prevent all types of marketing of unhealthy foods to children and adolescents. But why do we ban cigarette advertising? when in fact the food we eat now is a far bigger cause of death and disability. And let me just explain why that is. We eat too much salt, that puts up our blood pressure, that is the second cause of death and disability in the UK after cigarettes. Too much saturated fat puts up our cholesterol, which is a major cause of death, and then too much calories from the fat and sugar, particularly in products that only give you transient feeling of satiation. We know all these fast foods, McDonald, Hambo's, Kentucky's, sugar sweetened drinks. Only transit said it make us obese and cause type 2 diabetes. So why do we allow this to be advertised to a very vulnerable group of children? We want a ban, a whole ban, that's much better, just like for cigarettes, rather than pushing back barriers like we saw with cigarettes. They always get rammed in another way. And then we want a 20% sugar tax. Now, this is only on sugar sweetened drinks, so we can encourage people to switch to artificially sweetened drinks, which are better, although we prefer them to drink water, because there's some worries about artificially sweetened drinks. And that, 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 that tax would escalate if the soft drinks, and we're talking about cocoa and Pepsi don't cooperate, the tax would escalate just like it does for cigarettes and alcohol. All public food sector, all schools, prisons, civil servants should be strictly controlled according to healthy eating guidelines and uniform color coding. Now, an important part of this is to have an independent agency funded by the government that would monitor and would carry out the reformulation. As you've just heard from the British Retail Consortium, from Andrew, that 
we want regulated targets like most countries who've copied the UK program for salt production because we've pioneered that, been copied all over the world. They're now regulating those targets because we're fed up with companies not stick saying they're doing something under this ridiculous responsibility deal we have now. We want to go back to something like the Food Standards Agency. That's a very important part of it. So that's our plan in essence. If you want to read more of it, you've all got one. It's very brief and to the point and has the evidence at the end. It's, in my view, and I'm biased of course, it's by far the best and by far the most evidence, brief account of what needs to be done. Um, I'll come back to that in a second. Can I just say a lot of thanks to Jaron Davis for, for sponsoring this, particular thanks to Alison who's really been great in the last few weeks in really pushing the agenda forward to Tim and it's great we work together in the Food Standards Agency, something on your CV you seem to have forgotten about, but, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway he was a great guy at the Food Standards Agency and he'll remember that, particularly to Andrew as well for coming along at very short notice I might add, and then to all the people who, who supported us, firstly Liberty for designing the posters you may have seen here, they did these free of charge. Uh, the, the fact that sugar is a major threat to the NHS, I'm sure you're all aware of that. And then supporters who are here, Aldi, the Cooperative, Sainsbury's and Waitress, and also the Children's Food Campaign. And also to all our advisors, we're very dependent on our international board for the science behind our recommendations, and we're very grateful for them. And last but not least, uh, all the people who work with me who've set this up, particularly Jennifer, uh, Corda, Sonia, Steph, Lorraine, and particularly David Clark, who's been brilliant. We've had so much publicity in the last week because everyone jumped on our Sugar Awareness Week, which was decided at very short notice only a few weeks ago to put more pressure on David Cameron, and it certainly has, so well done, David. Now, coming back to the plan, the question really is, and I would beseech all of you to put as much pressure as you can on Cameron and the Cabinet Office, because they're the ones who are deciding this, not the Department of Health, and the question I'd leave you is, Will Cameron have the guts to do it? Thank you.